find its interaction and start walking you through here. Um, did that to try to show things that you might experience in the price of which is very much fine. I've got some things that I'll here to get you to show here. And if you could do a free screen like this, a shady, all that kind of stuff. Welcome to the Optimize booth. Um, we're going to be showing you a technology preview today. Um, this technology is based off of the Cassad acquisition. Um, this is you know, about being able to do um, management of broad um, data center environments in terms of being able to do both uh, virtual and physical. Um, actually running through a real demo, so everything you're going to see today is real application off and running. Um, server on the back end here um, is a uh, Erlang based environment, uh, Erlang some telco technology that we're making use of to be able to get to the level of availability and scalability that we're in need of. Um, the iPhone app or the iPad application that we're running here, um, more of a concept car on that to try to get a feel for um, mobile devices are coming and so this is something that we're starting to look at in terms of ways to be able to better enable our customers to work with things. So go ahead and fire up the app here for you and we'll walk you through some stuff. Um, while this thing's coming up, what I'm going to walk you through from a demo standpoint is um, we have an existing set of applications that are up and running right now. I'm going to go ahead, go into one of those applications and set it up such that we'll um, put a load against it such that it needs to allocate an additional item to it and sort of see it react to SLAs in an automated fashion. Um, I'm then going to overcommit the system and go ahead and walk through a harvest example and an example of cloud bursting out to Microsoft Azure to be able to run. But all that starts with, let's get us logged in here, okay. see how I do doing upside down. Yep, yeah, I was going to say, got to get the right button there to click. Okay, we'll go ahead and connect in. So start off with a quick flyby of what the metaphor is here. So, um, you know, you've landed, you're looking at what is the uh, Gulf Everywhere Manufacturing is the name of the little company. They've got a number of apps. All the different plates that you see in here represent the different applications that they have running in their environment. I'm um, going to go ahead and click on the CA ball in the center, which sort of represents the system for us. Bring it around here to the back side, you can see this is all the different items that are currently in the system. So I'm going to just show you here from a hardware standpoint, I'm going to go ahead and pull up here. You can see we've purposely constrained the environment such that we only have a total of four IA64 nodes. So I'm going to run you through an example. I'm going to end up using up that last one. That means we're going to have no resources. That's why we're going to go into the harvest example. And again, you can see the rest of the items that we have that are available as components to be able to be used within the system over here. Go ahead and flip back over. Let's go ahead and go into, and we'll start off with our first piece of it, go into the e-commerce application here. Um, you can see it's an uh, application made up of a total of five different services. Um, over on the left-hand side over here, um, there's a set of um, service level agreements against the components that are running inside of this environment. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and drill into the onboarding application. And it's a little three-tier app, so running on a database server, it's got a little web farm, it's got a .NET cluster. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the expand so you can actually see what the rest of the environment's made up of. So in this case, the uh, .NET cluster that we're working with right now only has one physical resource underneath it. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And this became context sensitive now to the SLA against this specific one. So I'm going to go back up here and we have an ability to inject load against the system. So I'm going to go ahead and create a capacity shortage. What you're going to find here is it's going to go ahead and add an additional node into this environment just in the time I've been talking there. Uh, if you look over here on the left-hand side, you can see that the SLA has dipped and then recovered mm -hmm. as that's happened. Next thing I'm going to turn on is I'm going to go ahead and turn on the chain so you can actually see what everything's running on. I'm going to go ahead and slide this thing up a bit. So you can see in this case right now, after I went ahead and, and uh, increased the uh, demand against the system, decreased its capacity, in this case it's now running on two different physical chains, right? Microsoft Server 2008 on two different IA64 nodes. So now, over here on these two, this is nothing other than the same views logged okay. into the same server, right. but I'm showcasing the two different applications. So I'm going to go back and forth here a bit as I walk through it. So I'm going to go back now. We're going to go into the finance application which is the other item that is set up to use the same .NET and uh, IA64 items. And I'm going to go ahead and turn off all that extra stuff that I had expanded. So in this case, you can see that I have a .NET cluster made up of two different nodes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put load against this. Mm -hmm. The way this is set up, it's the finance application. It's not allowed to actually cloudburst. We're not allowed to go outside with uh, proprietary uh, data or sensitive data. Okay. Um, so in this case, the first time Optimize runs after it recognizes there's a problem, it's going to say, going to check the free pool and see if there's any available resources to solve the problem. It's going to find out there isn't. So it's then going to go to its next run, and its next run is actually going to then look within the environment and say, is there a lower priority application 
that is out there that has the resources that I need. And if there is, then it's going to harvest those resources. It turns out that's what we have set up over here is that one that I just added the server to. It's set up to be a lower priority so it can be harvested from. And that one's set up to be able to go to the outside world, to Microsoft Azure, to be able to do what we call a cloud burst, to be able to get resources to shore itself up um, by going outside to the public environment. So all of that said, let's go ahead and walk through it here. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. Same thing we did before. Going to generate a shortage on capacity here. Now, coming back over here, after I've done that, you're going to see a couple of things start to happen. Right-hand screen's gone red. That's because okay. we're shutting it down. Mm -hmm. Left-hand screen's gone yellow. That's because it's recognized that it needs to have, to have the system operate on it. Right-hand screen's already reacted and gotten rid of the resource. Left-hand screen here, you can see we're down on our breach. We're coming back up. And if you go ahead and slide this thing up, right, everything running on physical nodes because that was the policy requirement mm -hmm. that was set up for this one. Back over on our right screen here, if you swing this one around, lo and behold... .NET there, running on a physical chain, and that one's Microsoft Azure. Okay. So it's actually recovered from the uh, breach. It moved the resources over here. That put this one in breach. So it then had to run again, and it said, oh, but in this case, I can Cloudburst to be able to solve it. In all cases, if I go back down here and click on his SLA, you can see both of them back into their normal range. Any questions? That was really good. So, so this is like a, something that's what with a massively scalable under